Hi students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I am streaming to you live from beautiful Budapest here in Central Europe. This is a members chat class. Everybody's welcome to watch. It's a good idea to watch this class because in 90 minutes, uh, I will have a follow-up class to this, which will be speaking part three. Hi, Awaz. We have a member joining in. And of course, that makes this class topic, speaking part two, the cue card, sometimes referred to as the long response uh, in the IELTS speaking section of the exam. Hi, Rodrigo. Hi, Ferdobs. While we wait for some more members to join in, uh, these materials come from our websites, aehelp.com for the academic version of the exam. Make sure to check us out there. Members, make sure to use that website. There are so many uh, good materials that are useful for you there, even in the free version. Uh, for general IELTS students, check us out at g-i-e-l-t-s-help.com. Both of these websites include over 100 hours of video lessons, dozens of hours of HD lessons in video, uh, interactive course, integrated app for your phone, tablet, PC. You can get our apps, Academic IELTS Help and General IELTS Help from Google Play and Apple App Stores. Link the app to the websites. You can get practice speaking interviews, editing services, and there's even a 30 and 60 day study plan for the IELTS exam on those websites. Hi, Chabi. All right, uh, those websites, just real quick, they look like this. This is the academic here with the blue background, aehelp.com. Click that red button to join the premium package and click the green button to try it for free. And this is the general version of the website. Green background, click that red button to join the premium package there. If you have questions about the products, the websites, the apps, or the IELTS in general, just send me an email, adrian, A-D-R-I-A-N, at aehelp.com. Hi, Rajveer. Getting a good number of members joining in now. And uh, this is our new schedule, everyone. So uh, today, again, on the 11th, we have speaking part two right now. We're, we'll begin in just a few moments. And then uh, we have speaking part three, which will follow from speaking part two today. So some integrated classes there. Uh, tomorrow, Monday, Tuesday, no classes. That's kind of usual for us. Uh, and then uh, on the 15th, Wednesday, back with speaking part one. And then, of course, more lessons throughout the week. I will post uh, the week's schedule on the YouTube community board where you can find lots of other useful information like example task one, uh, task two, essays, and much, much more. All right. So speaking part two, Awaz, Rodrigo, Ferdovs, Chabi, Rajvir, uh, before I go right into uh, today's uh, exercise, any questions about the speaking section or specifically about speaking part two? So. Any um, inquiries that have come up while you've been studying, thinking, hey, could I do this? Or is this something I shouldn't do? So any questions about specifically speaking part two, but about the speaking section? And again, today's class is speaking, so speak and repeat. Okay, speak and repeat. All right. And this is our cue card for today. Okay, so while you're thinking about that, maybe no pressing questions at this moment that's on your mind, um, let's get into uh, this cue card. So uh, again, as you know, speaking section, three parts. First part takes about five minutes. That's a little bit of uh, back and forth. Uh, Q&A about something uh, that you like or that you do, your favorite color. And then after that comes speaking part two, which is this cue card. Uh, the examiner will say, now we will begin part two. Here's a card like this. 
uh, with some questions on it. You will have one minute to plan your answer. Take notes if you wish, and then you will have two minutes to speak. I will tell you when to start, when to stop, and then your preparation time begins. Okay, and we'll do that in just a second. Um, so Rodrigo says, uh, you say that we should um, uh, answer speaking part three with answer, explanation, example. Should I wait for the interviewer to ask me for the example? No, Rodrigo, don't wait for the interviewer to ask for the example because maybe they won't. So include your smooth flowing example. And then if they say, can you elaborate or can you give an example or more details, then give another example or explain your example in more detail from a different perspective. Okay. So it's not a bad question, Rodrigo. It's not a bad question at all. Okay, it was actually, I think it was actually quite a good question. So, okay, uh, so step number one, um, we read the question carefully. Now in step number one, reading the question carefully, I have suggested an important um, point over the past few times that we looked at part two. What was that? Members, can you tell me that? So your first step always when you flip the cue card is to read the question carefully. And uh, I, I've told you a really interesting, important strategy as well that you should do when you're reading the question carefully. Anybody remember what that is? So read the question carefully. And A, so there's a couple of points here when you're reading the question carefully of what you should do. What is that? So while you're reading the question carefully, what is good practice? What should you do? There's a very important step that can easily save you a band score or if not a band score, a half band score. Okay, so Roshni says, look at the tense. Yeah, absolutely Roshni, that's one of them. So look at the tenses used in the question or in the cue card and stay with those in your answer. Okay, so identify whether you should be using the present tense, present and future, past tense, just the past tense. You will know that from the question. Okay, and I gave you another really important tip. So the tense is one. Definitely. So here, um, talk about a polluted place you have seen, right? It's present perfect in the past. So what is this place? Where is it? Why is it polluted? How does it affect life there? So past present, what could be done to reverse this pollution and who needs to do it? That might be future. So in this case, you will probably use past, present, future. And Rodrigo says, read it twice to be sure that you're clear. Um, Rodrigo, yeah, you don't need to read the whole cue card twice, but you need to read this twice. Okay. So sorry, that should be talk, not task. Um, <clears throat> so talk about a polluted place you have seen. Talk about a polluted place you have seen. So read the first statement twice to make sure that it's clear. Okay. That's a very good practice to implore. Okay. So read the topic statement twice to make absolutely sure that you have the right idea. Okay, because you would be surprised if you were in my shoes and you knew how often I see students uh, talk off topic and then when I give them feedback after they're done their practice uh, interview and I say, well, you get a band 6.5 or 6 because you're 
part two was off topic or kind of off topic. And then they look at the card again and they go, oh, I totally missed that. Um, it happens too often. So that's why I say read that topic sentence twice, okay? It's from experience. So, and the tense. Okay, uh, and then, uh, yeah, of course, the next step is to identify the topic and the category of the question. It's all kind of happening simultaneously, step one, step two. But you are right, uh, Awaz, we want to identify the topic. So, um, what is the topic here? Talk about a, poll a polluted place you have seen. What's the topic? What are we talking about? And that's that simple. Just ask yourself, okay, what am I talking about here? So what are you talking about? Yeah, it's a place. Uh, that's the category for Dobbs. So we're talking about a place. Specifically, we're talking about a polluted place I have seen, right? So that's the specific topic, polluted place I have seen, something that I've actually seen. That's part of the topic here. So it's not just any polluted place, but a polluted place that I have seen. Okay, good. And when you're talking about a place, uh, what should you think about including in your response? So place includes what? This is a little bit of review for some of you, I know. But you should know this because this should be very quick in your mind. So uh, when you are prepared for the IELTS exam, then you should be very clear about what to include when talking about a person, place, object, event, and idea. So that should be absolutely clear. Uh, Roshni says definitely the appearance. Yeah, so what does it look like? So what does this place look like? That's absolutely true. Chabi says the location. Yeah. So where is it? Where is it located geographically? Okay. East, west, north, south. In the province of, near the city. Okay. So, or in the center of the. So you have to think about its location, its appearance. What else? So satisfying times, Chabi says the population. Um, so yeah, the people who use it, right? So um, so it's utility, people who use it or the animals, plants that use that place. So who uses that place, right? It's utility. Okay, so it's location, it's appearance, it's utility. Uh, places obviously have some kind of connection, usually for humans and for the living world. Okay, um, Rajvir says common attractions. It's not common attractions, Rajvir, but it's the activity. So what goes on there, right? So who uses it? And then the activity, what do they do there, right? So what do they do in this place? So think about the location, think about the appearance, think about the utility, activity. Knowing these points can really help you because if you're stuck during the two minutes, you can always think, well, did I talk enough about who uses this place? Or did I talk enough about what goes on in this place? And if you realize, oh, no, I didn't say too much about that, then you can keep coming up with information. So Ferdov says the attendees, yeah, utility activity. Let's call it attendees. Yeah, attendees, as uh, Ferdovs correctly said, is basically who goes there, who uses it. And there's one more point that you should consider. This is specifically for places because places generally exist for long periods of time. So one more point that you can consider when describing a place is the history, okay? So, and history is interesting because history kind of affects all of these other points. So in the past, so the location remained the same, but the appearance 
utility activity attendees that can all change throughout time, okay? Type of place, um, Awaz, that's part of its appearance, okay? If it's a forest or a mountain, a park, then that's described in the appearance of the place or in the location of the place, okay? But yeah, I get what you're saying, Awaz. Okay, good. So now we go to step three and um, we come up with some ideas. Okay, so give me some ideas, uh, at least two or three, okay? So three possible answers. A polluted place that you have seen. Give me three possible answers for this. Hi, Aisana. Welcome to the class. We have a good number of members in here now. So again, remember, uh, when you're thinking of your two, three possible choices, never just go with your first idea. Always think of two or three. Maybe your first idea will, will be the best, but you have to make sure, okay? So you have to make sure. And uh, Awaz says factory. Factory Awaz is not good because factory is uh, a place that creates pollution, but calling it a polluted place, that's awkward. I definitely wouldn't consider um, that. Okay, Rodrigo says a bay. Okay, that's good. Uh, I'll use the name of a bay that I know uh, in Canada. It's, I think, the largest bay in the world. It's called Hudson's Bay. Sure. Um, a bay, students, uh, that Rodrigo is suggesting is uh, when you have, um, like in Canada, here, let's do this. Uh, so here is the province of Quebec. And uh, Newfoundland Labrador up top here. And this is Hudson's Bay. So this is Canada here going this way. And this is Hudson's Bay. Um, a bay, this is the ocean. Okay. A bay is when you have this kind of a drop looking uh, uh, piece of the ocean that comes into the continent. Okay. That's called a bay. All right. Um, Chabi Hong Kong, it's too big. It's too much there. Okay. Uh, Ferdov says Kata Beach in Thailand. Sure. Okay. So a beach. We're just giving it names. It could be any name, right? Okay. So Kata Beach, that's good. And be specific here. So we have Hudson's Bay, we have Kata Beach. A beach, of course, is any shoreline along. Uh, the ocean, lake, even a river could have a beach. Okay, so a polluted beach, a polluted bay. What else? Give me some other names. Just Karan, industrial area is awkward because it's common for those places to be um, polluted. I don't know if I would go for that. I would probably choose something from nature. Uh, a football stadium after a game for Dobbs is awkward because that's, we would refer to that as dirty or messy, not really polluted, okay? Roshni says Goa Beach, could be, sure. Okay, uh, what else? So be a little bit creative. There's a couple of other uh, low-hanging fruit, which means easy answers here, I think. Uh, it can be Hudson Bay, yeah. Hudson, it's not Hudson's Bay, it's Hudson Bay. Yeah. Hudson Bay. Uh, Carolina, good to see you in class. Carolina says Mexico, D.C. Mm, don't go with something so big, Carolina. Choose something a little bit more specific, like a specific beach, okay? Even Hudson's Bay is quite a large, um piece of uh, area. Uh, Chabi says a river. Yeah, like the uh, Tigris or the Ganges River, right? Ganges River? I'm not sure how to spell that. But yeah, a river. Okay. How about uh, Central Park? Okay. Could be another one. Okay, Rajvir says Yamuna River. 
Okay, now when you're making your choice, so it's great that you're thinking of these ideas. When you're making your choice, of course, think back to the card, right? So uh, what is this place and where is it? Why is it polluted? How does this affect life there? So when you're thinking about choosing the answer to talk about, consider those questions and think about, hey, which one's going to be my easiest choice? So you thought about a body of water, like a beach or a river. You thought about a piece of land, like a park in the city. Okay. Maybe a forest. All right. Okay. So uh, I'm just going to number these. Let's pick one and let's do it together. So Hudson Bay, one. Uh, Goa, Kata, beach, two. River, uh, Yamuna River three. Let's go with that. Uh, Central Park four. Uh, just vote, students. I'll leave it to you. Uh, which one you want to talk about? A river, lake, part of the ocean, or a park? Uh, give me a number that you want to choose, and then we'll go with that. Okay. So just give me a number. And then I'll take the uh, popular vote. We got two for one, two for four, three for one, two for two. Okay. All right. So we got a good mix here. Um, personally, students, I would say that uh, Yamuna River would be the easiest choice. I would go with the river before these other ones if I were you. And I'm surprised that not a lot of you are choosing number three. Chabi chose number three. Uh, why do you think that is? So we can go with a different one, but why do you think I chose river before we begin here? My choice would be river, and we could argue about this. I'm not saying my, my idea is better than yours necessarily, but I would choose this river, like Yamuna River or the Nile or something like that. Why would I do that? Roshni says it's easy to talk about. What's easy to say about a river? Why, why is it, why, Roshni? You're right, Roshni, it is easy to talk about. Why is it easy to talk about? Yeah, and Awaz says there's a lot of information there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the river, so a polluted river, there's a lot of information that can be said uh, regarding a river, why it's polluted, how it gets polluted, there's a lot of different ways that you could talk about it. Um, so... Lots of information for pollution. And why else? So there's a lot of reasons why it can be polluted, the river, for sure. What else is interesting about a river that makes this my top choice? Take a look at the questions again, right? So... It's easy to say why it's polluted, right? So it's easy to say why it's polluted. And look at these other ones. How does this affect life there? Again, a river usually has a really big impact on life, okay? Um, it's kind of, again, easy to talk about that because a river has a lot of utility, right? We use rivers for a lot of different purposes. So how does it affect life there? Um, is, again, kind of easy to talk about. Um, what could be done to reverse this pollution and who needs to do it? Again, probably fairly easy to talk about, okay? I would say, right? So I would choose river in this case. I would choose a polluted river if it's possible. Here in Budapest, I would probably talk about the Danube River, which is the largest river that goes through Europe and is definitely quite polluted compared to the past, okay? So I would choose river, but it seems like most of you want to talk about the Hudson's Bay, um, and we can do that. 
So we can talk about the Hudson's Bay as well. Sure. And that was the more popular choice. So we can do Hudson's Bay. Let's do Hudson's Bay. Okay. And then you can try river on your own for homework. So Hudson's Bay it is. Let's create some notes that are useful. So step four, we have our choice, Hudson Bay. And we want to take some notes. So, um, <laughs> it's like, let's go with, no, let's go with three, uh, too late. This is what happens in IELTS. If you've made your choice and you made one that's a little bit trickier, then you got to stick with it. If you've started speaking, you can't switch. So we're going to stay with Hudson Bay and don't worry, you can do a river for homework. Okay. So choose a river for homework and see how well you do. Okay. All right. So, um, Hudson Bay. All right. Um, give me some notes, some useful notes. Give me some useful notes that I can apply in my two minutes. Quickly students, notes have to be quick. Just type whatever comes to mind. Okay. For Dove says it's in Canada. Sure. So it's uh, Northeastern Canada. Yeah. Okay. Part of the Atlantic Ocean, right? It's one of the largest bays in the world. Maybe the largest. Okay, next to Quebec, Newfoundland, sure. Okay. So give me some more information. Who uses it? What is it used for? What's the history of it? Just give me as much information as possible. And even if you're not familiar, like even if some of you right now are going, but Adrian, Hudson Bay, I have no idea about this bay. Um, it's no different than any other large bay that you can think of uh, in your area. So I'm sure that uh, many of you live in countries that have a bay. Uh, Colombia has some large bays. Um, India has some bays, and they're used for very similar purposes as the Hudson's Bay. Yes, absolutely, Rodrigo cruise ships go through there. Yeah. Um, and yes, Roshni, there's a lot of industry. There's definitely a lot of tourism, including cruise ships. Certainly. Okay. Uh, Carolina. Yeah. Lots of cities. Yeah. Sure. Yes. There's definitely fishing that goes on there. Huge industrial fishing. Absolutely, Rodrigo. And guess what's happening to the fish because of the pollution? Okay, so the fish are dying. Yeah, Rajvir, it's one of the biggest import export um, areas in the world. So, absolutely, import export. So lots of ideas. And this is one of the dangers when you choose a place that's so big, like the Hudson's Bay is you might actually come up with too much information. So you have to really control what you say and how you say it so that you're staying, uh, structured and clear in your response. Okay. Yeah. Rodrigo, there are all kinds of competitions there. Absolutely. Okay. It's used for industry. It's used for fishing, uh, logging as well. A lot of forests are cut around the Hudson's Bay. The Hudson's Bay is used to export those logs, swim them across the ocean. Okay. Um, yes, that's right. There's definitely uh, septic water that's 
drained into the bay. Okay. Sure. All right. So we're on the right track. We've written down our notes. We don't have more time for more notes. So let's move along. Uh, step five is your first sentence. Give me your first sentence, please. So here's the part two cue card question again. Give me a nice full sentence answer using the cue card to begin your response. So when the examiner says, all right, your one minute preparation time is up, please begin speaking. Then you go blah and out comes that first sentence right away, right? Not five seconds, not 10 seconds later and not saying thank you for this opportunity or there are a lot of polluted places in the world, but one I want to talk, no, give me the direct sentence, okay? There's definitely a lot of oil that's transported through there as well, Chubby. Absolutely. That bay is so big that it's basically used for anything you can imagine that water is used for, oceanic water. Absolutely. So it's used for all kinds of industry. Basically, anything that comes to mind is uh, possible here when you're talking about the Hudson Bay. Okay. So first sentence. Yeah, Roshni says, so lots of plastics, debris, human waste. Mm -hmm. So Rajvir says, a polluted place which I have visited last year is the Hudson Bay in Canada. Um, yeah, very good. Okay. Uh, venue doesn't work here, Rodrigo, because venue is a store. It's a physical store or shop, okay? So a uh, polluted place that I have spotted is Hudson's Bay. Spotted is a bit awkward here too, Rodrigo. Spotted means like you see it in the distance, like, oh, there it is. Um, so a polluted location that I have seen uh, is the Hudson's Bay, which is a bay that sits next to Quebec and Newfoundland as well as none of it in Manitoba. <laughs> so there are other <laughs> territories and uh, provinces that surround the Hudson Bay, but yes, you're on the right track. Okay, so a very polluted place that I have seen last year is the Hudson uh, Bay in Canada. Okay, good, nice. Roshni says, well, yes, I have seen the Hudson Bay six months ago in Canada, which is quite polluted. So make sure to have a very accurate sentence for your first sentence, Roshni. Students, make sure you don't have any mistakes in your first sentence, okay? So Awaz says, one of the most polluted places I have seen is the Hudson's Bay, which is situated in Canada. In fact, students, uh, to be honest with you, some parts of the Hudson's Bay is polluted, but some parts of it's not. It's a very big bay, but it doesn't matter. For the IELTS, it doesn't have to be the truth, okay? So a uh, very polluted place that I have seen last year is the Hudson Bay in Canada. Um, all right, and then we continue. So good, we have our first sentences. Now let's keep moving along. So let's keep adding information, okay? So what I want you to do now is think about what to say next, all right? And again, it's good to follow this logic. So location, appearance, uh, utility, activity, attendees, history, okay? So kind of following this logic and then the questions, okay? So a great strategy is to th go one, two, three, four, five, 
Um, four, three, four, five, they're kind of together. Uh, you might have six in the beginning here, okay? Um, and then think of the questions afterwards, okay? So first, now we want to talk a little bit about the location and the appearance, all right? Okay, so where is it located? What is it? What does it look like? Okay. This is one of the largest bays in the world. Located in north eastern Canada between the provinces of Quebec, Newfoundland, and Manitoba. It is a part of the North Atlantic Ocean. All right, so that's the location. Let's see what you have. Uh, Rajveer says it is located in the southeast of Canada and is cover and it covers about a thousand uh, square kilometers. I think it's much bigger than that. Rajveer. Uh, the Hudson's Bay is huge. I'd have to check Wikipedia, but it's massive. But it doesn't matter. As long as you're kind of close, that's fine. Okay. So Ferdobs is going right into um, its utility. Okay. All right. Um, before I would do that, I would say um, it has thousands of kilometers of shoreline with many cities surrounding it and lush green forests. Okay, so a little bit of description, right? What it looks like. Always, whenever you're talking about a person or a place, students, always take a few seconds to describe at least a little bit of the appearance so that your listener can picture it, visualize it. Remember, humans are really visual beings. So, when they can picture what you're talking about, like an object, a person, or a place, it's going to be much better. You, you will get a better mark in the exam, okay? All right. So what happens there? Who is there? Yeah, so for Dobbs, you're on the right track now. Um, so for Dobbs is saying there are many reasons for this, like industrial revolution, fishing, wastewater draining into the bay, logging and cruise ships. Okay, so I would do it like this for Dobbs. The bay today and over the past few centuries has been used for a wide range of activities including logging, fishing, oil, transport, exports and imports, as well as tourism like cruise ships. And then I would connect it for Dobbs to the pollution. So this for Dobbs members is staying with that logic of 
no matter what the place is, so no matter what the controlling idea, if you're talking about a place that's polluted, uh, you can stick to this concept of location, appearance, utility, activity, and then as you say that, connect it to the controlling ideas. Um, all of this human activity and industrialization has led to pollution, right? So all of this human activity and industrialization has led to extensive pollution, okay? Don't let me take control of what you want to say, members. Just say it, okay? So don't just observe what I'm doing, but get out your own ideas. I'm just kind of guiding and suggesting, moving you along here, all right? So uh, the next sentence is yours, all right? Uh, let's go back to the beginning. Uh, repeat after me. Let's go through this together and then give me the next sentence, okay? So a very polluted place that I have seen last year is the Hudson Bay in Canada. This is one of the largest bays in the world located in northeastern Canada between the provinces of Quebec, Newfoundland, and Manitoba. It is a part of the North Atlantic Ocean. It has thousands of kilometers of shoreline with many cities and lush green forests surrounding it. The bay today and over the past few centuries has been used for a wide range of activities, including logging, fishing, oil, transport, exports and imports, as well as tourism like cruise ships. All of this human activity and industrialization has led to extensive pollution. Okay. Give me the next sentence. What do you think would be good to say after this statement? All of this human activity and industrialization has led to extensive pollution. Give me the next sentence. Roshni is asking me a question. Sir, can we say it like this? The whole water has turned into a green and black color due to the pollution. Yeah, so, you, so something like that, Roshni. It's not bad. Um, I would say it like this. Um, in the 1800s, the water was a dark, clear, dark blue color, but these days, Pollution has turned it into a murky. Murky is um, a word which means kind of like watery. Uh, sorry, milky, like milk. Like um, it's not clear. So the opposite of clear water is murky water. When you see like um, as if there's milk kind of moving around in the water, it's called murky. So, but these days pollution has turned it into a murky, uh, dark green to brown color. Yeah, I think that's a great idea, Roshni, to next talk about how uh, pollution has affected the water. Okay. Okay, very good, Rajveer. So Rajveer says the pollution is not only harmful for water creatures like fish and turtles, but also impacting the quality of uh, life of human beings living close to its vicinity. Really nice, Rajveer. Very good. Yeah, so going into how is this affecting the life around it, right? So, um, a nice use of the correlative conjunction, Rajveer. I absolutely see it. Don't you threat when you use it, I catch it. So, this pollution has not only affected the creatures living in the water like fish and seals okay uh i don't know about turtles there rajveer um i think turtles are more in the southern Atl atlantic for the oceanic uh, tortoises but um definitely some fish and seals that live there 
like fish and seals, but also, but it is also degrading. Okay, a little bit more specific, Rajvir, degrading uh, the quality of life for the citizens living in its close vicinity. Nice use of the word vicinity, Rajvir. Okay. For Dov says, after pollution, many individuals have been emigrating to other parts of the world, um, as well as many species of animal and fish have become extinct. For Dov's good try with the ideas there, have become extinct, and it's emigrating. When you leave from a location, you emigrate away, and when you go to a location, you immigrate to. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> in recent years, the situation has become so dire that several species of animals have become extinct and many people are moving away. Okay, good. So I'm definitely um, moving along nicely. Some good fluency. Joya says there should be an in environmental initiative to keep a regular check on various activities. So Joya, good. You're going for the next step. I was just about to get there, but you are ahead of me. So we've talked about um, the people there, uh, the life there, so the utility Okay, and we're thinking of the original questions, and that's great. So we've talked about what the place is, where is it? We've talked about why it's polluted. We're talking about how it affects life there. And now we definitely want to talk about what could be done to reverse the pollution, right, um, before we run out of time. So students, uh, this last question, you want to get to this question uh, at least 40 45 seconds after your start time. One big, big, big mistake that many students make in part two is they get to this question late, okay? And sometimes they don't get to it at all. The examiner says, okay, your time is up. Give me back the card, the questions. And the students are going, oh, I didn't even get to that last question. What's going to happen? You're probably going to lose a half band, okay? If you don't answer all of the questions. So you do have to get to this question fairly soon, and then if you still have time after you answered this question, you can go back and talk more about these other points, okay? But it's really, really, really important to discuss all of the questions on the card within the first 80 seconds, okay? Because sometimes examiners don't give you the full two minutes. They have that option. Okay, that's why they say you have one to two minutes to talk about this topic. If they feel like you're going off topic or you're not going to answer that last question, they're just going to stop you and go into part three. So you definitely want to get there. All right. Okay. Um, so Joya says there should be an environmental initiative. Um, to keep a regular check, to keep regular checks on the various activities that take place there. And this could include reducing the number of cruise ships allowed into the bay each year. Okay, sure. Now, uh, be really careful, students. Make sure that you always read the questions carefully. This is a two-part question. What could be done to reverse this pollution and who 
needs to do it. So this part, if you're looking for that band eight, band nine, the IELTS examiner is definitely looking to see if you answer this part of the question as well. Okay. Um, so here again, just make sure that you put the, uh, put the idea into your response as quickly as possible. And then you can always elaborate, right? I believe that the Canadian government, don't just say the government, but if you remember that you're talking about a place in Canada, say the Canadian government, use adjectives, okay? Be descriptive. So I believe that the Canadian government uh, is mostly responsible to make these changes happen, okay? All right. Uh, for Dobbs, right. So for Dobbs says, not only government authorities have to uh, get the situation under control, but also the people who live around Hudson Bay. Okay. Roshni says, to cut down on this hazardous pollution, awareness plays an imperative role. So with the concerted effort of both individuals and governments, the issue can be tackled. Another way to do this is enforcing strict rules and regulations. Very good, Roshni. Okay. Uh, Joya says there should be common uh, affluent sewage treatment plants, waste management centers to prevent the contamination of the bay. Very nice, Joya. Nice vocabulary. Students, make sure that you're repeating as I'm saying these, okay? Uh, for Dobbs says government officials and locals, uh, for Dobbs, you don't need to say local individuals. You can just say locals. Locals is a noun, which means people who live there in Spanish. It means crazy people in English. It means just people who live there. So locals, okay. Uh, must keep control of all activities, which could harm the environment of Hudson Bay. Good. Aisana says, by increasing the amount of fees, tourists would value not only their visits, but also the Hudson Bay. The higher the payment for their experiences, this could deter people from committing any wrongdoings, um, from uh, polluting, right? Aisana, stay on target. So uh, focus your vocabulary on the idea of pollution, okay? So, uh, and be specific, Aisana. So I would say by increasing the fines for tourists who litter and damage the area, this would not only make their visits more valuable, but they would pay more attention uh, to avoid polluting, like a $10,000 fine for littering, okay? Which is common. In Canada, there are uh, fines uh, two thousand dollars or more for throwing away garbage in nature so for those of you who are planning to go to canada keep in mind you could get a two thousand dollar fine for throwing garbage away that's why a lot of people don't throw garbage away <laughs> okay uh rajvira says canadian authorities should penalize the factories which discharge their affluence in this bay good rajvira okay nice all right students good job I think we've got it. You can always expand. Uh, repeat after me. Let's go through this. So a very polluted place that I have seen last year is the Hudson Bay in Canada. This is one of the largest bays in the world located in northeastern Canada between the provinces of Quebec, Newfoundland and Manitoba. It is a part of the North Atlantic Ocean. It has thousands of kilometers of shoreline with many cities and lush green forests surrounding it. The bay today and over the past few centuries has been used for a wide range of activities, including logging, fishing, oil transport, exports and imports, as well as tourism like cruise ships. All of this human activity and industrialization has led to extensive pollution. In the 1800s, the water was a clear, dark blue color, but these days, Pollution has turned it into a murky, 
dark green to brown color. This pollution has not only affected the creatures living in the water, like fish and seals, but it is also degrading the quality of life for the citizens living in its close vicinity. In recent years, the situation has become so dire that several species of animals have become extinct and many people are moving away. There should be an environmental initiative to keep regular checks on the various activities that take place there, and this could include reducing the number of cruise ships allowed into the bay each year. I believe that the Canadian government is mostly responsible to make these changes happen. All right, really nice contributions, members. Those fantastic. Um, I think it was a bit of a challenging topic, Hudson Bay. I think it's kind of far away for many of you, but you did a good job nonetheless. Again, you don't have to tell the truth, okay? You just have to have good communication. Now, uh, for homework, uh, a challenge would be uh, to uh, maybe try the same cue card, but instead of the Hudson Bay, choose a different body of water. I highly suggest a river, okay? So choose a river, try it, and send it to me. This is for members only, okay? So if you're a member of the channel, you can send me that recording in MP3 format to my email, and I will gladly give you a score estimate and maybe even a sentence explaining why you would get that score, what you need to do to improve. Uh, that's my email again, adrian at aehelp.com. And now, coming up in 30 minutes, we will have a speaking part three, which will continue from this cue card. So members, make sure to join the class in 30 minutes because these will be questions related to this topic of part two. Same to all of our viewers, just like in the official IELTS. Thank you, Awaz. I appreciate the applause. Uh, and again, to all of our viewers, check out and join our premium packages at aehelp.com and gieltshelp.com. Aehelp.com is academic IELTS and gieltshelp.com is general. Click those big red buttons to join the premium packages. That's it for now, students. Again, in 30 minutes, I'll be back with another lesson, speaking part three. Hopefully, I will see you then. Much love. Bye for now.